Hello and welcome to Bleeding Tree Gaming. I am Luke, aka Samine, and I've been given the keys to the kingdom tonight to run through a few of the new faction focuses that Games Workshop have put out recently. So, first of all, we're going to talk about the Bone Reapers. And I know a fair few people have been very excited about these, because they are definitely looking like one of the stronger factions that we've seen so far shown off. Admittedly, it was an army I was questioning how they were going to translate into an addition with few command points, because they're very command heavy, but uh, if we look in the, into their battle traits on this page now, we can see that they've been given a relentless discipline rules as part of their battle traits. So essentially, one of your heroes, uh, depending on a phase, there's movement phase, charge phase, and combat phase ability versions of it. You can pick a hero, and the effects will apply to all Bone Reaper units with it wholly within 12 inches of that hero. So movement phase, you've got plus 2 inches to movement of everyone. Um, we've got the ability to uh, retreat and charge in the same turn. Uh, charge phase, we've got plus 1 to charge rolls. It's pretty good. Uh, we've got an anti-charge one now. That's that sounds really nice. <laughs> um, so essentially, any of your friendly units have the anti-charge plus one rend while they're wholly within twelve of the hero. Which that's horrible that you can just do it in any charge phase. <laughs> oh dear. And then um, combat phase, we've got plus one to wound rolls, always solid, and a five up ward save for all of your units wholly within 12 of the hero. So there's six different things, two things for three different phases, but all of them sound absolutely brilliant utility pieces. The only thing is just clustering them around a hero. Unfortunately, we don't see any special rules or previews for Catacross in this uh, article, which ideally is probably going to be the one that you're wanting to do some of these abilities from, because that base is huge for getting as many units in there. But uh, we go down to battle formations. There's a previewed one where you can get plus one to cast for all infantry Bone Reaper wizards. Uh, there's a couple of other examples they give. Let's say one about the Mortec Crawler having um, fortified positions. That sounds interesting. Uh, tireless cavalry to ride out ahead of your, your armies. Or endless waves of Mortec Guard. That sounds like it's going to be a really nice uh, recursion thing there. Just making super annoying troops pop up constantly. Uh, the example of a spell they've given for us is Empower Neverite Weapons, which is an unlimited spell. It goes off on a 5, and it basically just causes criticals on hit rolls of a 5 plus for the units that you cast it on. So if you've got a couple of wizards, you can put that on a couple of units, and there's a lot of critical <laughs> effects that are going to be affected by that. That's really nice. So we see... Vok Mortian, the master of the bone tithe, he's got a fairly standard kind of infantry hero profile here, like four up saves, like fairly decent for most kind of like infantry heroes. He's got an interesting little one shot um, ranged attack. He's got critical two hits. Well, it's it's the Neverite weapons on his melee weapon. But he's got this once per battle ability, and this is horrible. <laughs> so you can pick an enemy unit within 12 of him that's visible, and then for the rest of the turn, non fight core abilities cost one command point for the target to use. So that's your movement, that's your charging, it's your running, it's, it's everything it, apart from fighting. So. In, a, in an addition where command points are so few and far between, just like if you had this hero in your army to do that to someone, that is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, he's got a mortal contract spell that uh, goes off on a 7. You can inflict d3 mortal damage on the roll of the 2 plus, like we've seen a couple of times, but. Every time the bound enemy unit 
Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's tell you next turn. Uh, so basically every time you pick one of your units and an enemy unit and then every time the enemy unit tries to attack your chosen unit they basically can suffer d3 mortal damage on the roll of a 2 plus it's pretty nasty <laughs> he's got his uh, he's a 2 cast wizard and he's got a 6 foot ward built in like I was like death factions are all going to have at least a 6 foot ward built in to them uh, we go down to the Mortis and Soul Mason. Again, Neverite weapon on his uh, on his melee for critical two hits. Uh, Soul Guide, though. This sounds interesting. So pick a uh, Bone Reaper's unit holier than 12 of the caster, and they get to uh, strike first. So that's uh, <laughs> it's really nice, just guaranteeing you'll get extra hits before the enemy get to uh, strike you back. Again, uh, power, uh, power level 2 wizard, and he's got his 6 up ward save. Now, the Necropolis Stalkers. I've seen, uh, I know a couple of people that have been running these uh, in the current edition, and they haven't exactly been too happy with them, but they are like quite terrifying things to look at. Like um, They've got a 4 up, 4 up on like health and uh, their save characteristics and they, they've got this uh, just any combat phase they can pick one of the following effects here so you can either subtract free from the control score of enemy units while they're in combat with you which is nice I mean these guys have only got like a control score of one and I think it's only free in the unit for a, you know three to six depending on whether you reinforce them or not uh, they can be subtract one from hit rolls that target them in combat uh, ward rolls can't be made for damage points inflicted by this unit. That's that's pretty nasty. Or you can get an extra bit of rend against an enemy hero, which takes them up to rend free. <laughs> uh, they've already got like four attacks apiece hit on freeze, wounded on freeze. I mean, it is only one damage, but uh, the critical two hits and empower neverite weapons on them. I think they could be they could be quite nice. Especially against little squishier uh, infantry heroes, I, I don't think there's going to be much surviving the amount of attacks they have. Uh, we go down to the Mortec Crawler. Now this thing, I don't know if it had the, the Neverite rule currently, but now when you are firing at enemies, you get a, you get extra hits on the critical hit roll. And against infantry, you're going to be doing Ren two. D3 plus 2 damage. <laughs> it's, uh, it looks like it's going to be a very powerful catapult. And then you've also got this little ability here that uh, you damage an enemy unit, and then if there's a Mortis and Oss effector, wholly within 12 of you, you get plus 1 to the roll of this, and you can add another plus 1 to the roll if there's another Mortec crawler next to you. Uh, on a 4 plus, the enemy unit that you shot at gets a strike like last effect until the end of the turn. So, so far we've already seen a couple of means of getting some strike first and a, a means of getting strike last on the enemy fairly easily. <laughs> so, you can guarantee like, the order of combat for them. Uh, we go through the word on the studio and then we get the uh, spearhead detachment here. Basically, they've just got like a little. Uh, you only get like one of your units of Mortec Guard on the board until turn three, and then you can bring the other one on. Um, you basically get commands with them in the uh, spearhead. So you get special like Ossiac command points that you can use, and there's uh, special things on. You see on the uh, Death Riders War Scroll here, it's essentially a little. Ossiac command it has as a keyword there, so it essentially gives them the uh, the impact damage that they have currently, which is going to be interesting to see if they have that on their actual war scroll going into the full game. But looking at their profile there, they they look pretty pretty good actually, like three wounds still, four up save, three attacks apiece, freeze fours, rend one, plus one damage on the charge to go up to damage two. I mean, they'll definitely have their exploding uh, 
you know they'll be able to generate additional hits in the full in the full game of fourth edition. But yeah, uh, Bone Reaper's looking fairly solid. I'm I'm pretty sure like a lot of people are very happy playing Bone Reapers, looking at these rules. <laughs> Obviously, if you are a Bone Reapers fan, please let us know and uh, let us know what War Scrolls you're dying to see still. Moving on, we go to the first of our elves for the this week. And they have the Daughters of Cain. So Daughters of Cain, mainly a very fragile, fast melee army. And their battle traits in this edition, they have a special kind of command point thing where once per battle... They can spend a command point, and a Daughters of Cain infantry unit in combat can fight twice that phase, but they do gain the strike last keyword after they've done it for the first time. Uh, they're passive, they still essentially get the blood rights that they do now, but there's not really any increases to the ward saves this time around. So battle round one, you get these are all cumulative as well, so they stack up on each other as the battle rounds go on. So battle round one, you're getting plus one to run. Battle round two, you're getting plus one to charge. Three, you're getting plus one to hit rolls. Four, you're getting plus one to wound rolls. And then battle round five, you're getting plus one to your attacks characteristics. So if your stuff's still sticking around on battle round five, they should have a few attacks each. Battle formation wise, we get a nice little one for the uh, Scaveborn. So basically, all Malusai or Canari units, if they make a uh, 8 plus on their unmodified charge roll, they get a Strike First effect. Which again, Strike First is always nice. <laughs> um, they just mention some other ones going on about magic users and breathtaking acrobatics to ensure that charges hit home. And then another one about uh, the Cauldron Shrines. It just seems like it might give the Cauldron Shrines some kind of impact damage. But I think that, that one tease there sounds quite nice, because most people like using the snakes and things anyway in the Doors of Cain army. So we get the example of the Endless Spell, the Blade Wind. So he gets, gets nine attacks... Freeze, freeze, rend one, one damage, but it does have critical two hits. Uh, movement of 12. Six up save seems to be standard for all of the endless spells I'm seeing. Seven health's fairly average for him, and a banishment level of seven plus. It does have a combat phase ability, where if it's charged, uh, roll a dice and on a free up ignore positive modifiers to save rolls for the target for the rest of the turn so yeah nothing they can do to increase their defense against you that's uh, that's pretty nasty so we go down to actual Marafi's uh, war scroll here yeah Marafi still has a one soul two bodies where any damage that Little Marafi takes, the Shadow Queen takes it, and then the Shadow Queen can only take three damage per turn still. Um, she's got this Mirror Dance spell, which sounds really fun. Um, essentially, from how I'm reading it, you can swap out Little Marafi for the Shadow Queen when if you cast this spell. So if Marafi's in a in a bit of combat that you don't want her to be, you cast this and then on a a 7 plus if you're not uh, unbound then you can just swap her out for the shadow queen and then she's in combat attacking someone instead. She does get a passive for a plus one to cast rolls as well so hopefully that spell will actually be able to go off fairly easily. She's a power level 3 wizard as well though which uh, is going to be interesting seeing what some of the other spells for Daughters of Cain are like. Moving on down to the Shadow Queen. Yeah, she's still got her uh, Gaze of the Shadow Queen a ranged attack. Um, I think it was a flat damage roll at the minute though. I'm not quite sure. But it's D6, but it is shooting combat and it is rend free. 
Oh, I think it. I think it does mortal wounds at the moment. So yeah, the fact that it uh, does regular damage but has like a huge rend on it uh, swings and roundabouts. Um, move twelve, health twelve. So it's going to take four turns to kill her at least. A uh, four up save and ten control. Eight attacks with a heart render, and each critical roll just deals flat free mortal damage on the user. <laughs> That's pretty nasty. Um, yeah, the Iron Heart of Cain passive that I mentioned about before, and then her Rampage. So on a D3 roll on 2 plus, uh, basically mortal damage. And if any enemy models are slain by this ability for the rest of the turn, add one to the attacks characteristics of melee weapons used by Canaria Malusi, wholly within 12 of the Shadow Queen's base. Now she's got a massive base. <laughs> and also, if you're in battle round 5, that's a, that's a nice extra 2 attacks on everything that's around her as well. So we've got the Sisters of Slaughter next, like one of your basic kind of troops. It's interesting the War Scroll says they have the bladed bucklers. I don't know if there's going to be the option for them to not have it in this edition. It might be separate War Scrolls, I'm, I'm not sure, but... Essentially, it gives them this passive called Dance of Diversion, where it's subtract wrong from hit rolls against them. And also, they have the ability on an unmodified save roll of a 6, they inflict a mortal damage back on the unit that was attacking them. Um, they look all... I mean, they're two attacks each, so a standard unit's going to have like 21 attacks with a champion, freeze fours, and then you get a pip of rend if you're attacking infantry be interesting if they get um, any kind of spells like Mind Razor or anything going into this edition there. And we've got the Canari Heart Renders, which I was quite surprised seeing these things finally move up to two wounds apiece now. It's uh, I think it's been a while and everyone's been wanting it for ages that plays Daughters. I mean, they are basically just cheeky little things that drop down from the sky and get you you know, corners the battlefield edge battle tactic and stuff at the minute, but uh, who knows, maybe they might be a little bit better now, they're a little bit more survivable. Um, yeah, the the thing we always bring up here, Deep Strike's just two rules written down on their war scroll, <laughs> if, there, if there was the universal one again. Um, they retain their little ability as well, that if they shoot, they can actually move straight after shooting something. Um, I'm not sure at the minute if it's like a set movement amount, but now it's just D6 inches that they can move, and they can't move into combat from doing it. Yeah, I'll say I can't remember, it's like their full movement range or something at the moment, which if it was 12 inches before, it's uh, probably a little bit nicer for your opponent that has been knocked down to just D6 inches. So the spearhead box, uh, there's no special rules on like having to leave things off the table until later on in the game, but you basically get a slightly watered down version of the blood rites. Obviously you're missing the, tur the battle round 5 one, because uh, spearhead only goes on for 4 battle rounds. But again you're getting plus 1 to run, plus 1 to charge, plus 1 to hit rolls, and plus 1 to wound. Which, hopefully you got a lot of attacks in that box, uh, and by uh, about round four they'll be doing some damage. They do show off the Bloodstalkers for the uh, the example from the Spearhead box, and they got three shots apiece with their bows now, but it's, uh, I mean, at least in Spearhead it's not any mortal damage on the critical roll, it's just an auto wound. Uh, threes and fours, rend one, 18 inch range. Uh, but basically, it says here for their passive, if they stand still, then they get the uh, critical ability going off on a 5+, plus, which is quite nice, that. They still look about the same with 8-inch eight inch, eight inch move and uh, 2 health and 5 of plus save, but um, I don't know, maybe if going into the full version of the game, if they don't have the mortal wound thing anymore, it might be 
slightly fairer for your opponent. Uh, you might not like see quite as many Bloodstalker spams as uh, third editions brought. And that is the end of our first Elven preview. On to the second, the Lumineth. So basically, if you've been watch, if you've watched the special game that they previewed about, oh, I want to say about a month ago now, they did show off quite a few of these Lumineth rules already. Uh, the battle traits generally uh, rely on picking for certain keywords in your army. So you've got your Venari, you've got your. Um, <laughs> why, why the names? The Alarif. Uh, you got the Wind Temple ones. Um, basically, your whole army passive battle traits that you get to select two of your units to fight every single time instead of uh, instead of just one. Which they they have that currently. It's really nice. Uh, again, anything that just guarantees that you could attack with one unit and then another in Age of Sigmar is really good. So you can pick one of these different facet of war abilities and then obviously depending on the keywords it'll only affect like certain units in your army. I've, I mean Skaven's got something fairly similar to this. I, it, I like it but at the same time it's not something that affects your full army. It's only very small amounts of units for the battle traits but as you, as we'll see looking in a minute, there's actually means of game, being able to use more than one of these in a turn. So the battle formations, it gives the example of the Alarif Fortitude. So basically you can use their Enduring as the Rock for all of the Alarif units to ignore one pip of rend. But you can also choose another one of the facets of war for, the, for your army as well. Which... I've got a Lumineth army at the minute where it is mainly Alarif, but I do have a few kind of Venari units and things in there as well, so being able to get that, make sure that the Ren's still off my Alarif, but also being able to maybe put off Shining Company for uh, minus one to hit. And it does sound quite nice. I think it does mention here that basically all the other battle formations are essentially the same as this one, but you get to have like the um, Huracan Temples one as your main one and then you can choose another one etc etc so an army that's very prominent with magic Lumineth they have uh, it shows you here their um, endless spell the Sanctum of oh dear <laughs> Animtok <laughs> I probably butchered saying that name completely <laughs> Uh, it goes off on a four. It's basically a, a weird three-part endless spell that you set, you uh, put in a ring around a hero, and then essentially that hero's kind of uh, can't really move, otherwise the spell dis just dissipates away from them. But it does give the hero a few benefits. So essentially, this is an endless spell that has no health or anything. The only means you can get rid of it is by actually banishing it or killing the hero that's actually inside it. But when you look at it, the hero gains a four up ward when they're inside it, so maybe banishment might be the better option. Um, the wizard gets to plus one to the power level, but then there, there are slight downsides that charging into the hero you're actually like measuring from the size of this endless spell and not the actual hero that's inside it so I don't know maybe there is like pluses and negatives to it moving on to the unit focus we have Elena and Elephor now I really like this model anyway after playing against it at the tournament and I wanted to get it in my Lumineth army but this they definitely look I'm not sure. I feel like they look like they've gotten better here. I I could be completely wrong. If <laughs> if you want to uh, tell me otherwise in the comments, they've they've got a nice little shooting attack that's twos and threes, rend two, d three damage, and it has critical auto wound. Um, El Elifor's sword is five attacks, twos, threes, rend one, two damage. But there's something that we'll read in a little 
in just a couple of seconds it's huge for that and then uh, Elena just basically has like a staff attack that's uh, d3 if it goes through so basically in your hero phase you choose which one of them takes the lead and if you pick Elena then you add one to the power level of the of them being a wizard so they are essentially a wizard one to start off with but they can be a wizard two quite easily they actually have a five up wards they've built in now which I believe they had to cast a spell on themselves before to get that off uh, she gained, you gain a four up ward as well <laughs> that's huge on top of a four up save but then if Elevor takes the lead until the start of your next turn, add the current battle round number to the damage characteristic of his sword. So essentially, by the time you're on battle round five, that sword's five attacks doing flat seven damage. It's like, ooh, I don't think I'd want to be... I mean, it is only round one, but anyone that gets through is some massive damage out of you there. So basically, they've seemed to have gained Total Eclipse as one of their War Scrolls spells now, and it does look like they've watered Total Eclipse down slightly. Um, so basically, cast on an 8, and until the start of your next turn, it's only the first time an enemy uses a command point within 18 of them. They must spend an additional point. Currently, this is just like until the start of your next hero phase. Every time the enemy uses a command point, it costs them two. So this is slightly, slightly less oppressive to play against, but still a huge thing when you've only got four command points. They still have the interesting like end of turn ability. If they um, if they've slain any enemy models, they can heal D six and then they can teleport away. But then um, Elena has to take the lead on the next turn. So, you know, you know when you're going to go in, you used L4, you picked him as the one that's going in. Hopefully, it's like battle around three or four so you can do some big damage on them. And then you can just teleport away <laughs> and guarantee that you got yourself the uh, four up ward next turn. I think they I think they look really good to be fair and uh, again it's very points dependent if they've gone up ma if they've gone up massively in points they might not be worth it but I, I think they look a really cool character so yeah Severif Sef Severif <laughs> the lord of the seventh wind he looks an incredible shooting model like um he has He's got four attacks at 12 inch range, but he's got an 18 inch move. And then uh, the actual kind of special rule that you can choose at the start of your turn that applies to the Hurricane Temple is once he's actually shot, he can then move again. So he can get 18 inches away from anything that he's just shot at. Uh, four attacks, twos, threes, ren free, d3 plus one damage, and shooting combat. He's not that great actually in melee. I mean, the wounding on a four is not exactly that great, but still six attacks, like he might get something through there. He can't be targeted by shooting attacks unless if the enemies are more than nine inches away. <laughs> he's he's a horrible, horrible thing to try and take down, and you'll wanna try and take him down as well, otherwise he'd just be running rings around the map shooting at stuff all game, really. Uh, he, he, his rampage you can pick up to three different enemy units in combat with him and then uh, roll d3 on a 2 plus inflict mortal damage and then subtract one from wound rolls for the target's attacks that's pretty nice just an extra layer of survivability to him I mean he's a 4 up save and a 5 up ward he, he, he might last around to be fair <laughs> and his passive the spirit of the winds all friendly hurricane units are wholly within 12 of this unit. They can shoot and or charge ability. They can use shoot and or charge abilities even if they've used a run or retreat ability the same turn. And they don't have the mortal damage inflicted from a retreat. That's huge for like the um, uh, the hurricane wind riders. 
uh, they they were in the preview game alongside Severith, and uh, yeah, they they did really nicely all game long. To be fair, again, Stone Guard were something that was previewed in this uh, special game as well. Um, yeah, they they look a little bit better now. They've they've gained flat two damage on the hammers now. Uh, they look a little bit more like they're actually going to go in and hit something pretty hard now with those hammers. They have a 5 at ward save while all of its models are contesting an objective you control as well. So, yeah, 4 up save and a 5 up ward, they look, they could be pretty tanky. What else do we have? We have the, uh, the wardens. The basic kind of troops of the spears. I mean, 1 health, 4 up save, but they are just your basic troops. They do have a nice like anti-charge, plus one rend, and they do cause mortal damage on critical hits. And then they've also got an anti-charge actual combat phase ability, where if um, they can essentially gain strike first on a four up roll, and if it's a cavalry unit that's charging them, it's a three up that they get strike first. So it's a unit of ten, like you're getting about 21 attacks with them. That's pretty nice, like, minus one rend and always the chance of doing some mortals, like, probably will make you think twice about charging them, especially with cavalry. And then we go to the spearhead. Basically, there's just a, a smaller selection of the facets of war, and it's not really locked to any keywords in this one, so you've, you've still got Shining Company for minus one from hit rolls. Uh, you've still got, oh, you've got one that actually gives you like the ability to do critical hits on uh, hit rolls of five plus. That's pretty nice. Uh, and you've got one here. Oh, that's basically just the same one again, where you can pick two units instead of one, but it's classed as a facet of war and instead of a general passive in, in spearhead. Just double check actually in the battle traits that is actually just yeah that is just passive for them and then the example they give is the venari blade lord so two health four up save uh they gain a bodyguard rule where if they're wholly within combat range of a hero both them and uh both the general and the unit have a five up ward they do have their Swordmaster's ability still where they can choose to kind of forgo their regular attack profile and just try for like mortal damage instead. So potentially you could do like five mortal damage from the unit or rolling two ups. But I don't know, like when they've got like three attacks apiece and they do critical mortals on the hit roll anyway and they get minus two rend against infantry, I kind of feel like I don't know, I, I don't know why you'd really take the chance, really, <laughs> of doing the uh, perfect strike for them. Obviously, if there's something with some really good armour that you that hasn't got the infantry keyword, maybe you'd choose that instead of it, but uh, I don't know. Let me let me know your thoughts on it, anyway. <laughs> so that's the end of the, the free previews we've got so far, and we do actually have a release date now for being able to pre-order the box, I believe... It's here. I think it's the 13th of July it actually comes out, but I think it is the 29th that it actually goes up for pre-order on the website. So, yeah, we finally have a date for 4th edition now. <laughs> are you excited? And Are you going to get your pre-order in as soon as you can? Um... Also, the little teaser here right underneath the Blade Lords is another army I'm absolutely dying to see the new rules for, the Heat Knights of Sunesh tomorrow. So, oh, I say, <laughs> that's the army that got me into playing AOS, so I'm very excited to see what they can do in this new edition. Right, well, I'm going to sign off here anyway. Hope you've enjoyed my little look through the rules previews, and um, please give us uh, a like and maybe comment on what army you're still waiting to see some rules for. Let us know if you're hyped for the new edition. Uh, just, just chat with us, really. <laughs> We're here to talk. Anyway, 
hopefully uh, Warpfiend will be back with me in the next video anyway for a little bit more of a structured banter between the two of us. But um, yeah, I've been Samayim, and uh, happy gaming everyone.